Welcome to another video in the Transformer series. In the previous two videos, I described the self-attention and cross-attention mechanisms, as well as the multi-head attention which form the basic building block of Transformers. In this video, we will put everything together and will cover the full architecture of Transformers as it was proposed in the paper Attention is all you need. So let's get to it. This is the full architecture of the original transformer model proposed by Wasmoni et al. It is composed of a stack of encoders and a stack of decoders that are linked together. Let's expand these stacks of layers to see their connections more clearly. And here is the expanded stack of encoders and decoders. As you can see, the outputs of each encoder layer is passed to the decoder in the same layer. This connection is done through the cross-attention sublayer in the decoder where it receives the key and value vectors from the encoder in the same layer and the query vector comes from the decoder itself. We will see that in more detail later. Now let's focus on the encoder layer and see the sublayers in more detail. We start with the input of the first encoder layer. We have an input sequence of tokens which is passed through an embedding layer and we get a sequence of embedding vectors. The dimensionality of each vector as well as the outputs of each sublayer is denoted as D model which is set to 512 and it is known as the dimensionality of the hidden representations throughout the model. Next, we have position encoding. Because transformer does not use any RNN or CNN components, then we somehow need to provide the position information of each input token to the model. These position encodings are basically a sequence of embeddings where each element in the sequence has the same dimensionality as the token embedding vectors. Position embeddings are computed using the sine and cosine functions as shown here for different odd and even dimensions. For example, if sequence length is 32 and D model is 128, the result can be visualized as this heat map shown here. Similarly, changing the sequence length to 64, the resulting position encoding would change to this new heat map. Once we have the token embedding and the position embedding matrices, we add them together element-wise. And this will form the input to the first encoder layer. The other encoders will receive their input from their preceding encoder layer. Each encoder layer is composed of two main sublayers. A multi-head attention sublayer in the form of self-attention using the scale dot product attention and a feed-forward network or FFN. Each of these sublayers are enclosed in a residual block which adds the input and output of the sublayer. So basically X plus sublayer of X where X is the input and sublayer of X denotes the output. We have already described the multi-head attention and self-attention in details in the previous two videos, so we are not going to spend more time on that. But as a short recap, multi-head attention receives three vectors Q, K, and V and performs a scale dot product attention in each head. And then it concatenates the heads together. After obtaining the multi-head attention output, we add the results with the input using the residual connection, so that is x plus MHA of x. And finally, we perform a layer normalization. Layer normalization is also a critical component of the transformer model. Layer norm can be described with this equation as layer norm of V equals gamma times V minus mu divided by sigma plus beta, where mu and sigma are the mean and the standard deviation of the elements in V and gamma and beta are parameters known as the scale and the bias vector. After that, we move to the second sublayer, which is a position-wise feedforward network or FFN. The FFN is mathematically defined as shown in this equation. But to understand what it does, I like to expand this FFN block as shown here, which includes two fully connected layers and a ReLU activation in between. The first fully connected layer expands the hidden dimension from 512 to 2048 and then the second one brings it back to 512. The input is a sequence of vectors x1 to xt where each vector xi has dimensionality d model. Note that the weights and biases of the fully connected linear layers are shared among these different vectors. 
After obtaining the outputs of the FFN, the rest is similar to the multi-head attention sublayer. So we will do a residual connection for adding the input and output of the FFN, so that is X plus FFN of X. And finally, we do layer normalization as explained before. And that forms the output of this encoder layer. This output is passed to the next encoder layer as well as the adjacent decoder layer. So let's move on to the decoder stack and have a look at its architecture. The architecture of decoder layers is shown here where each decoder has a multi-head self-attention, a multi-head cross-attention, and a feed-forward network sublayer. For sequence-to-sequence -sequence modeling tasks, the target sequence is actually serving both as input to the decoder stack as well as the expected output. So as a result, we have to mask the attention metrics so that the model does not attend to the elements which it needs to predict. That is why we mask the compatibility matrix Q K transpose by setting its upper triangular to negative infinity before applying softmax, as I explained in my previous video. Moving to the cross attention sublayer, this cross attention receives the key and value vectors from the adjacent encoder layer and the query from the preceding multi head self attention sublayer. The rest, including the residual connections and the FFN sublayer, are the same as described in the encoder. At the final decoder layer, we add an additional linear layer followed by softmax to get the probabilities of the predicted tokens. So that basically wraps up the encoder-decoder transformer architecture. For training this model, the authors used Adam optimizer with a warm-up stage which adjusts the learning rate based on the step number using this equation. The number of warm-up steps is set to 4000. With this warm-up stage, the training starts with a very small learning rate which increases for the first 4000 steps. And after that, the learning rate will decrease gradually. So why the warm-up stage is necessary? Another paper which we will discuss in the next video claims that this is because the layer norm is placed after the attention sublayer, and this will cause large gradients in very early phase of training. This architecture is called a transformer with post-layer normalization or post-LN. There are other ways of placing the layer norm which we will cover in the next video. So in this video, we wrapped up the full transformer architecture and looked into the details of the encoder and decoder, the positional embedding, and the warm-up stage for training the model. In the next video, we will look into different variants of the transformer architecture, which do not need the warm-up stage anymore.